Uh, Project I basically is the, again the Nazi connection. The name comes from the um, the Giza intelligence group underneath the Giza pyramids, the Nazi group in World War Two. Well, what Nazi group is this? Is it um, it's known as the Giza intelligence, the Nazi group. And which part of the Giza plateau were they involved in? I don't know. I just know they were um, based underneath the Giza pyramids. There was a facility, the Nazis in World War Two, and. Um, the name connects to Thoth, the um, the immortal, and the Egyptian. His um, some connection with an ibis bird would represent Thoth in Egypt. And what are they? Were they trying to find in Egypt, or what did they find in Egypt? I think they found some kind of life extension technology, and this was effectively that. This was a major part of the ibis program: was life extension. Regeneration. Is there, is there some kind of chamber that you could mention, or any any particular uh, area? Yeah, there's the emerald chambers. The emerald, the, or the emerald rooms. But I think that is that's in more than one location. Um, I'd rather not talk too much about the emerald rooms. I'd rather Why? just focus um, because it's such a complex subject. It's. Um, is this to do with the storage of souls on the earth and the recreation on earth? This is very much physical. Um, this is... They... At the um, Q552 we were being indoctrinated with Nazi principles, um, Germanic principles. Um, were you indoctrinated by Nazis? Yeah. It was Nazi. It wasn't just Nazis there, but there was a big Nazi presence. Um, some of the philosophies were indoctrinated with there. Um, you see those philosophies in um, Germanic organizations to this day, like the Odinist Fellowship in this country. Um, the philosophies are based around, obviously, the creation of a, an uberman, a superman. But um, they see life on Earth as a means to an end. They're not trying to get somewhere else. They're not trying to get to heaven or another planet. They want to become physically immortal in this body, on this Earth. And stay here. Now, um, we're also indoctrinated with the, the Germanic belief in um, endless warfare. Um, is that would be our reality once we stayed here physically? We um, our reality would be endless warfare, and there'd be periods of rest. In Purely to maybe reorganise the, the logistics, or um, they talked about the Thousand Year Reich, the Thousand Years of Peace. Um, which would be periods of rest in between the warfare, and then it would just be a continuous cycle. And um, that was effectively um, how they'd indoctrinated us to be assassins when we were older, so we could keep functioning. If we were concerned about the next um, hit and had anxiety about that, we wouldn't be able to carry it out and function. But if, in our mindset, if we believe that we were designed for endless warfare, and it would never stop. Um, we would just accept that and be able and be relaxed when we were involved in assassination. I'm not sure the mountain name. I know that there's a, um, a logging compound nearby, and there's an old um, access route near the logging compound that actually takes you to the base in the mountain. And Nelson's a very small town. Yeah. Um, again, the above ground um, section of it was an aircraft hangar. And um, when we were first brought there as bait... So is, is, it a, is it got a runway and landing place? Or? Um, it's fenced off, high fences. And um, it has, yeah, it has a runway in front of the aircraft hangar. You come in... But the, um, the aircraft hangars is sort of fenced around the runways here and the aircraft hangars here. Yeah. It's quite a big building. Um, but as babies, we, were, um, we slept in the aircraft hangar often because um, it was a, essentially a trauma center, so they wanted us to be exposed to the cold. And there was um, sets of cots in there. So this they is high up, I mean, a couple of thousand feet up on the High up, the Rocky Mountain, yeah. very high. Um, it's near Banff National Park. Right. Yeah. 
Um, so they, we were kind of being exposed to the elements, essentially. We slept there um, in the aircraft hangar with the doors open. And there was rows of cots, and we were under 24-hour armed guard all, at all times, so we couldn't be rescued from that facility because there were factions there that would rescue us at the first opportunity. And the people that like the par- parents uh, or or the well special forces groups, um, the people that guarded us were they wore um, they wore black uniforms. Um, some t- and they wore black masks, but sometimes they wore the um, ultra modern SS uniform. Which and what's that? It's um, it's kind of like your standard SAS black ops uniform. Um, with black boots, black trousers, black top, but the um, it has chest plates and there's leather around the arms, and it has the um, SS double rune on the, the chest. Double the, the, um, yeah, the, the SS symbol. It was the name of the project that I was um, involved in, uh, well, born into, effectively, yeah. um, was named Project IBIS, and it was run by the NSA and MI6. And um, it was... It was um, tracking of 42 children from different countries and um, all those children were brought to a facility in Canada in the Rocky Mountains um, underneath a small town called Nelson. And what, what countries? Why were they selected? Um, according to the file information that I've seen, they were selected for because their DNA. The, um, the NSA information that I've seen um, says that we have what they call blood prime which um, it, it states Anunnaki DNA. What is blood prime? What's, what specifically are the differences? I think it's a type of alien DNA, human, um, alien, hybrid. Is there any particular rhesus negative, positive, or anything like that? Um, I think it, there's that, the rhesus negative factor in it. I think the, the, the O negative factor... So that, how are the children selected as such? I mean, does that mean there's some means of uh, selecting, is it, is it from different, you know, at birth, are that people's bloodline, um, up medical records? I think the mothers were um, selected and um, the embryos were cloned embryos grown in an artificial environment, um, test tube babies. And I think those, from my understanding, those um, embryos were then implanted into specific women who gave birth and then at the time of birth the children were transported to the um, underground facility at Nelson in Canada. The name of that facility was a Q552. Where's Nelson? Is it in Manitoba, Winnipeg somewhere? That's a small town in the Rocky Mountains. It's in uh, British Columbia in Canada. Um, that So we were all taken there at the time of birth. Some, some from America, I think. Um, there was some from South America, obviously some from the UK. Um, I don't know who the other 42 children are. I've got a rough idea. The Q552 facility in Canada, in Nelson, was um, there was a lot of uh, Nazi psychiatry um, conditioning the going on there. What sort of what are you talking about conditioning? Well, for instance, um, at the facility, they were um, it was essentially a trauma centre. Now they did a lot of conditioning with us with wild animals. And what they were doing there, they, they used um, Canadian wolves, they used snakes, they used um, cats, wild cats, and tigers and things. Um, they were giving us the attributes of wild animals. Uh, they they were subjecting us to them. Um, um, for when we were older, 
um, for all terrain warfare, jungle warfare, Arctic warfare. So we had the attributes of wild animals. Why do you get the attributes of a wild animal? They used, um, they set up, I think it was the second level down at the Q552, um, they set up a kind of pen, um, 30 feet, 30 feet wide. Um, they set up a, this pen, they put the babies in the pen, and um, they put wild animals in the pen. They might put snakes in there, or you know, wolves. Only one type of animal at a time, they didn't mix the animals, there was always one type. Now this um, pen was very similar to a Skinner box they use in psychiatry. What's um, a Skinner box? A Skinner box is um, famous psychiatrist Skinner, I forget his first name. Um, he would he designed this box and he, they put babies in it and they put animals in with the babies and they were doing cognitive behaviour tests, seeing how the babies would react to the animals. And um, they would uh, in this particular uh, this this particular device. Um, they put us in there and they set up screens in the corners of the pen. And uh, people's fa they, people's faces would be put on the screens, um, enlarged, and uh, the faces would call us and get our attention. We'd look, and the faces would start talking to us, people, and then uh, the faces would look like they were um, changing into uh, half human half whatever the animal was so if it was a snake if they were putting snakes in the pen this, the, the person talking would um, <clears throat> start talking to us and then his face would change into half human half snake lizard and um, they uh, George Bush senior was the main um, handler of that particular facility and um, his face would often come on the screen and talk to us. And he would do the, very much the, rep, the reptile with the snakes. That would be his area. Was that something that was done on a recorded type of a level, or was it he did it personally? Uh, he was on the screen. I'm not sure if he was there. He was there sometimes physically. But, I mean, the, the guy travels all around the world to all different bases. He's a major programmer. So I don't know, he could have been on yeah, the other yeah, side of the yeah, world. Yeah. Um, and he would come on and... Um, Did this something that you experienced directly? That this, yeah, I, I saw him, he used to talk to us, talk to me. And, um, and what age were you when this happened? I was a, this was 76, I was a baby. Yeah. And this, you know, this carried on. I, I spent from 76 to 79 there and grew up there. Um, the, uh, the Queen Mother as well, she was a programmer there. She would, um, her face would be flashed on the screen, but her speciality was wolves. Whenever they put the wolves in with us, um, she would come on and she'd talk to us and um, she would start to change into half woman, half wolf-like face on the screen. Was this done by some kind of electronic v video effect or? I don't know, I don't know. Um, Can you name any other animals associated with different other people? Um, the only ones I remember is um, George Brasina with snakes and the Queen Mother with um, wolves. It's it, the place was very dark. I'm still starting to. It's difficult to re remember everything that happened there. It's still coming back in bits and pieces. Um, I remember being put in the pen and um, toy with this group of babies and um, there were toys put in and um, one of the babies um, took a toy off another baby and the um, the little baby turned around and hissed at the other child like a snake and his face all went like a snake so we were there. this was absorbed into them psychologically or yeah think into so. their psyche yeah and with the DNA anyway, the Anunnaki DNA that the, the NSA were looking for. We went through operations there, there were surgeons there, and um, 
fought with the function of those? Because they, um, the surgeons cut us open and found um, cybernetics inside us. Um, so they'd, at the Q552, they'd slowly been um, cybernating us through with surgery. And um, essentially creating a cyborg soldier. Now um, these the surgeons at the, the um, place in Toronto they they cut us open, and apparently they they were like hey, what a mess you know this is and they tried it and they were th- thinking about trying to remove it, but then it it turned out that this um, technology had w- would integrate into us it couldn't be removed it was actually a natural part of our bodies now. Um, is this can is it detectable in any way? Um, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah. So are you saying that we could somehow, if we booked the relevant place, we could check out your cyborgs? If you went to one of those scanners in at the yeah. airport, would they see it? Um, you know, the new scanners? Yeah, that's interesting. Apparently, um, the bone is a type of metal that... Um, I'm not a scientist, but it's something to do with being off the periodical chart. It's not a... Um, a metal that's known to man, so we won't set off standard metal detectors. I've been told the closest um, thing we can compare it to on this planet is a, is a mixture of gold and diamond. It's extremely hard. So, I, um, so you, you don't know how that how that works technically. Um, there's apparently that that's the the bone, and then there's um, a small layer of kind of mechanical armour built round that bone to reinforce it further and um, is it sort of grown round it? apparently that is put in by some uh, it's nanotechnology the, the small layer of mechanical armour around the bone the bone itself is apparently metal this type of metal and um, it's built with nanotechnology that uh, is apparently they put some like worms or something in you, metallic worms, and they lay eggs, something like that, and it, it builds it. Is there a process name there? Is there any kind of? I think it's connected to the pro- a name of the Osiris program, um, the Proteus program. Um, right. Is there anywhere we could look that up? Is there any documentation we could look at? Not really. No. Um, I mean, I've got Im- I've got information from NSA databases, but it's not documentation. Yeah. So, no. this stuff you could look up on the internet as such. This is this stuff's never been talked about. Again, they 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 slowly cybernating these soldiers. What's the program name involved with that, or where is it happening? How is it happening in other facilities? It's, that, it's um, the umbrella project of IBIS, with numerous projects in that umbrella, including Mannequin. Um, so yeah, they wanted to, these surgeons want to remove it because they didn't understand it. So by removing it, would it cause more damage? So they have to leave it. This is stuff had integrated into us, so they actually classified a new life form. The scientists after that, they they um, classified us. They, they called it ascended. We were ascended machine technology. Ascended machine, machine technology, technology um, essentially a cyborg with a soul. And they developed a new law um, of robotics around us.